State. They'll start with Malia Worland, a freshman out of Henderson, Nevada, who had a 9.85 last week, matching a career high. She starts things off. Carly Buell will follow. Elena McGovern and Kylie Hamby in the middle. And the veterans, Courtney Blackson and Emily Lopez, will round things out. Just nine upperclassmen on this Boise State roster, but many of them play a key role. Blackson and Lopez and a couple others have been in this gym more than a couple of times. Yeah, Spencer and I were saying in the beginning, those are names we've heard uh, quite a bit throughout the years. So they've been yeah. consistent competitors, always producing good routines, and it shows that they're consistently in these lineups. So we are getting set for our first action of the night. Cachola waiting for the go-ahead over with her vault. Had a 9.85 last week, matching a season high. She's notched it twice this year. The Super 16 was the other time, and the junior seems to just continue getting better and better with all of her gymnastics. Pachola is a solid competitor, and her vaults, as Spencer mentioned, just keep getting better and better. And we are underway. Beautiful vault from Pachola. You see she's a pretty good distance from the vault, just a slight hop on the landing, but with good chest up. Uh, it's no wonder she's consistently getting those 985s. So over to the bars we go, and the freshman starts things off. And a common theme for this Boise State team under fifth-year head coach Tina Bird, not afraid to start with true freshmen on any of these apparatus. And she is looking super solid with a Maloney straight to a pack. Now going into her dismount, just a tiny little hop on the landing, but otherwise a solid start to Boise's bar lineup. Malia Werlein gets things off, and back over to the vault we go. Talk about standout freshman Naya Randolph. The coaching staff for these Flippin' Birds do not have enough good things to say about the freshman who has been competing in the all-around every single meet so far this year and is slated to do so once again here tonight. That is no small thing. It really isn't, and especially to jump right into all-around as a freshman is so impressive. And she's handling it like a champ. It has not seemed to pace her one bit. She is one of the most consistent competitors on this Southern Utah team. She has had three vaults that have notched a 9.8 or above this year. Looking to continue that here tonight back at home for Southern Utah. The second time this year they've competed in front of the home fans here inside the AFEC. Randolph patiently waiting as everybody is. We have our first score in of the night. Ellie Cachola with a 9.875, a season high for the junior out of Owasso, Oklahoma. So a strong start on the vault for Southern Utah. That's been their second best event so far this year. And Randolph takes off. Randolph with another good year Tinko full. She did have a little bit bigger of a hop than Cachola before her, but still a controlled hop, a lot of height. So that should still be a pretty good score for Southern Utah. Up next on the bars, Carly B. Ewell, another freshman for Boise State and head coach Tina Bird. She scored a 9-8 last week in the first bars routine of her career. No surprise that she is at the top of the lineup here for the Broncos. We see another Maloney straight to Bale. Really good handstand there, which is what the judges want to be seeing in all their handstands. Just a little short on that last one. A beautiful double-A dismount. Again, just a little over-rotation there on the landing, but the Broncos are looking really clean so far. Malia Werlein has a 9825 in front of her, so a couple of strong scores as expected for these teams looking to hit their mid-season groove. They will meet again next week in Boise at Extra Mile Arena. Up next on the vault for Southern Utah, the sophomore Kennedy McLean, the younger sister of Carly McLean, who is quite frankly one of the best gymnasts to ever come through this program. I could 100% agree. <laughs> Off goes the sophomore. Beautiful ball from Kennedy, lots of height, and you could see near the end of her ball, she's throwing her arms out to find the landing. That is key to looking for that landing, getting that stick. Um, she didn't quite get it, just a tiny hop, but once she sticks that, it's going to be just unstoppable. And when these gymnasts are, are, are performing their vaults, how do you try and match the power and amplitude you're trying to generate while also having to stick that landing? How challenging is that? I mean, it is a 
challenge, but the more height and the more power you have, the more time you have to find that landing. So as you see Kennedy, you know, she threw her arms out with plenty of time and able to open her hips, find the landing with the chest up. So if you're piked, you might hop forward or hop back with just over rotation energy. Um, she did a great job of opening up her hips, finding that landing. Elena McGovern, speaking of veterans of this particular matchup between these former MRGC foes, the junior out of Richmond, Kentucky, has had a 9.75 two straight weeks on the uneven bars. So the free hip to a ginger connected to a bail. That takes a lot of power to connect, make that connection. So she's going into a dismount. Go back, pull out. Just a small hop forward, but again, great routine. And this is still pretty early on in the season, so they only have up to go, uh, but they're looking really great so far. The number two gymnast scores respectively. Naya Randolph for Southern Utah, a 9.75 and a 9.725 for Carly B. Ewell on the Boise State side. Kennedy McLean has a 9.775, setting the stage for Mackenzie Kelly. So Mackenzie does a round off, full on pike off, which is a 10-0 start value, um, which is what you want a lot of in your vault lineup. Um, a Yurchenko full, which we saw Cachola, Randolph, and McLean do, was a 995 start value. It was demoted, if you will, to a 995 um, a couple years back just to encourage um, more difficulty and more variation in vault lineups. Um, and so Scotty is really happy to have, I think he said at least three 10 0 start value vaults this year, hoping for four. So back over to the bars we go, and Kylie Hamby awaits her turn off a season high last week on the uneven bars. You see some gymnasts starting in between the bars, some below the low, some below the high. What goes into figuring out what best suits the athlete? It just depends mostly on what your release move is going to be. Um, so it could be that she's starting from the back because she's doing a Jaeger, which is just a front flip where you recatch the bar in the same direction. Um, the athlete before did a ginger, and she started in between the bars, and that is a turning release move. So then she's facing the towards the low bar again. So you want to end your release move facing the low bar to then do your connection, which is either a bail or a pack. And it can be a little tough starting from the back, so you got to get that good swing. So she did a ray, and unfortunately just overshot it just a little bit. So then she'll have a second to re-chalk. I believe you have 30 seconds. Re-chalk and usually lift it back up to start over. That's the first time that she has fallen off the uneven bars this year. She's been a bar specialist for Coach White, delivering a lot of really good scores, all of them 9-8 and above, except for the season opener at Utah when she had a 9-7-7-5. Sometimes falls just happen. Sometimes it's just a fluke, maybe an off night, but that's why you have other competitors behind you to make up for your fall, and that's why lineups are so strategically made, right? So here she is finishing. She clearly has very clean lines. Going into a double A dismount. A step forward there, which will be a 10th deduction, but a strong finish. That takes a lot of mental fortitude to get up after a fall and finish a good routine. So good job to her. So the Broncos hoping they'll be able to drop Hamby's score, but and this is the thinking with, with Tina Bird's lineups, and we'll see a couple different rotations here as Kayla Pardue is up on the vault. Another 10-0 start by you vault. Uh, Yurchenko one and a half, so like the Yurchenko full, just one extra twist, which adds a lot of difficulty because it is a blind landing. Um, but Kayla Pardue competed this last year, is a very consistent vault competitor, um, and is clearly in this spot in the lineup for a reason because she delivers her one and a half week after week, and it's beautiful. And she's certainly one of the most powerful athletes that Southern Utah has in the lineup. But back yes. to Boise State, as they turn to Courtney Blackson, the senior here in the five slot with Emily Lopez on deck, Tina Bird's lineups have, have at least tonight so far, we you know have tentative lineups for each of the next three rotations. We've seen the first one so far, which is, of course, official. She's been putting the younger competitors at the start 
and having the more veteran gymnasts compete at the end. And this is certainly why right here she wants to rely on her two seniors to deliver routines. Yes, 100%. Um, it, and lineups are interesting because it takes certain kinds of gymnasts to be in the beginning and certain types to be at the end. Um, but most are prepared to be anywhere. And I think that's what uh, Tina Bird and both and Scotty Baum and Bull are aiming to do with their athletes to make them flexible in any position in their lineups. Kayla Pardue notches an even 9.8 on the vault for Southern Utah. She's had 9.8 or above in every vault this season, top 100 nationally. Sophomore continues to be a strong competitor for the Flippin' Birds in that spot. As the Broncos await the beginning, it looks like the judges are having a little get together. Sometimes you'll see this happening um, in competitions where judges are conferencing um, about a certain deduction. I, I wasn't able to see this judge's closest judge towards me, their score, but sometimes if they're off to a certain extent, they're gonna be conferencing about what they saw, what deduction they didn't see, um, and maybe trying to even it out a little bit. Well, as it stands with Taylor goals still to go on the vault for Southern Utah, this, the Flippin' Birds with a 48.95 on this first rotation and would have to notch above a 9.75 in order to improve upon that score. The Broncos to avoid Southern Utah taking an early lead on the first rotation at home have to be able to hit both of these routines here down the stretch. Yep. Remembering that six competitors go up and five scores count. So they can drop the lowest score. So as long as everyone else hits their routines, they should be in a safe spot. And ready to get things going. Here goes Courtney Blackson. Beautiful handstand to start off. Straight to a bale to handstand. She's going to do a huge release move. Just floating over the bar, which is so impressive. Straight into her double A and a stuck landing. First one we've seen of the night. Amazing routine from Blackson. Oh, the Broncos needed it, and boy, did they get it right there. That was very impressive from Courtney Blackson. Our final vault for Southern Utah, Taylor Gull. So Taylor Gull did a similar vault as we saw before, a round off, full on tuck off, um, where we saw from Kelly was a pike. T Taylor did a tuck. Um, which is a 995 start value. But she stayed in those lines again, remembering that the closer a gymnast gets to those lines, the higher the amount of deduction. So the farther you get, the wider they get. So the judges want to see getting good distance from the vault um, and staying centered. And Taylor did a great job of that. And all eyes turn. To another senior for the Broncos, Emily Lopez, getting some words of encouragement from her fellow upperclassmen. And there's probably nobody you'd rather have in a big spot like this if you're Boise State, tied for 19th nationally on the uneven bars. And she also has got a perfect 10 to her name. Back when Boise State was in the MRGC, she became the third gymnast in conference history with a perfect 10 on the bars and the fifth Boise State Bronco to ever do it. And away she goes. Nice held handstand up there, leaving no question up to the judges. Into a Pike Jaeger. You see her toes are just glued together, giving no question to the judges. And she goes into her dismount. Double A and a stick. Gorgeous routine from Lopez. And she's following a 9.925 from Courtney Blackson. And Lopez poised for a strong sh score. Should deliver a very strong first rotation for Boise State. Goal a 9.725. So the Thunderbirds stay at a 48.950 in the first rotation. And Boise State with those two final routines from the seniors could very well be poised to have the lead. We'll get you those scores and keep you up to date with everything happening 
One rotation in the books, three still to go. More gymnastics coming your way from Cedar City right here on Overnight. At Lynn's, we understand that having kids in back-to-back -back games means you don't have time for extra meal prep. Replay, that routine, she really, really looked to be on her game tonight. Oh, you could tell just from her first hand stand that she meant business. Um, and she did this insane release move, not one that you see very often in the NCAA. As you watch, just see how she flies over the high bar. Oh, we're looking at her dismount right now. But you can see her landing. Her heels hold together for one second before she finishes, which is a new rule this year across the NCAA. Gymnasts have to hold their landing, click their heels together, and then finish. And here we see Ellie Cachol as well. Same thing, her heels are glued together, holding for one gymnastics right before she finishes. Um, an excellent ball from Cachola. Cachol That's picture perfect, your shankle fold. Cachola led the way with a 9.875 for Southern Utah in that first rotation. The Thunderbirds are on the bars. The Broncos are over on the vault for rotation number two as we get set to begin. And Sydney Coe, the younger sister of two former Thunderbirds up for Boise State over on the vault. Southern Utah will begin with the freshman Brinley Christensen over on the uneven bars. And off goes Sydney Coe. Starting with a stronger Chenko full. You saw she got off the ball. She had that moment of pause where she set up for her full. Um, that's just really great technique. She did have a, a pretty good hop on that landing, but it was in control. Um, a good start for the Bronco vault team. Christensen, the in-state product out of South Jordan, Utah, and Providence Hall High School. Getting set to start off the second rotation for Southern Utah. Similar to Boise, starting off with some freshmen in the lineup, going into a Pike Jaeger. That was a pretty good reach on that, but a good Jaeger to a toe on handstand to a bail. So all bars routines require that high to low transition that we saw. Little shy on that last handstand. She almost had that stick. You could see her holding it for just a second, but took that step backwards. But a good start for the Thunderbird bar rotation. Elena McGovern is up next for Boise State over on the vault. Has already competed once tonight on the bars, and McGovern notched a 9.775 with her bars routine and gets ready for rotation number two. Another year, Chenko full from Boise. Um, just a little hop, you could see just a little bit to the side, but great distance, great height. Another good year, Chenko full. And what do you think is causing the, those hops forward for Boise State on their first two vault routines? Um, so that hop backwards, just uh, just a lot of power. Um, and again, like I said, sticking that landing is really hard when you have a lot of power, but it also helps when you get that height. Um, so just excess of power, and they might have just piked a little bit in their hips. Um, so they weren't fully straight open to get that landing, which can cause a hop backwards. Well, Coach Bird and Coach Bauman have gone up against each other many a times, and they have something in common tonight, both on the bars rotation, starting a couple of true freshmen at the top of the lineup, as there you take a look at Alex Routsis, who is about as relaxed as you can be. Yeah, <laughs> before, she's just swinging over there, dancing. It can be really intimidating to start a college lineup as a freshman where the college uh, com competitive scene is a lot different from club, but these freshmen have been doing it well uh, as evidenced by their spot in these lineups. Starting with a really beautiful Maloney to avail the handstand. A nice held handstand. And then she goes straight into a double A, which is really difficult out of a, just a handstand without any giants, but she did a great job. Just that small, tiny hop forward, um, but a great routine from Altus. The first score on bars for Southern Utah, 9.75 from Brinley Christensen, the same score she notched a week ago in the highest score of the season for Southern Utah. Sydney Coe began the second rotation for Boise State with a 9.725. McGovern with an identical score, and that is a look at Adriana Pop. Pop um, did a really unique vault that again, is, is fairly common in the NCAA, um, but you haven't seen tonight. And if you were watching, she just opened a little bit early. She clearly had plenty of power and height. Um, she was just spotting that landing a little too early, which caused her knees to buckle and to step forward a little bit. 
So uncharacteristic from Pop. I've seen a lot of really good vaults from her. So nothing to worry about for the Broncos. Well, the freshman lineup continues for Southern Utah on the bars as Naya Randolph steps up. And Scotty Bauman has got a lot of praiseworthy things to say about the freshman, and understandably so. She comes into this week top 100 in the country in the all-around reigning MPSF Gymnast of the Week. She's had that award a couple of times already this season. She's slated to do the all-around again here tonight. But what he likes most about this young gymnast is the way that she remains poised and calm, never gets too high and never gets too low. And honestly, that's really key in a gymnastics meet. You see these gymnasts running from event to event with like two minute transition in between, quick four minute touches. You really have to be solid and centered um, mentally in order to perform physically. Um, even though they've practiced over and over and over in the gym, uh, this competitive environment is still different from the gym. So you've got to be solid and centered in order to excel. She goes free hip to a Shaposhnikova, which is beautifully done. double a dismount tiny little hop um, but again the difficulty of going into a double a dismount just from that handstand is insane and she did it so well just like christensen did well you saw southern utah assistant coach jeff richards kind of work his way underneath the apparatus there it seemed like while randolph was in the middle of, of her routine and it looks like they're making some alterations to the bar this is the vault of Alyssa Boulage for the Broncos um she did a similar vault to some of the Thunderbirds the full-on pike off again another 10-0 start by you vault um she got into the vault pretty well it was a little crunchy uh which is kind of a gymnastics term for getting into the vault um and just a slight hop to the side and back um but again a 10-0 start by you has an advantage where you get that extra half tent to start out with well, the vault has been one of the two more troublesome areas for Boise State this year. They're ranked 42nd in the country. They're yet to eclipse 49 or above this year on the vault. But I want to go back to, to Coach Richards being, it looked like pretty close to Nia Randolph in the middle of that routine. Is that is that a common thing that, that you'll see coaches do? Yes, it's mostly for safety. Um, you probably saw him in between as she was doing her release move from low to high as well as high to low. Um, just to be there in case anything goes wrong, to catch the gymnast. Um, that's really the big part of it. And some gymnasts don't have the coach there. It really is just a personal preference. So up steps Bella Neff, who has thrice notched a 9.875 this year, including last week. She has been a stalwart on the bars, 9.85 or above with every routine this season. That is really impressive. Look at those lines. I'm like getting the chills watching her. It's just so gorgeous. Her toe point is just extended all the way to the end. Even as she passes the low bar, just a tiny step forward on the dismount. Really nothing else wrong with that routine, if you ask me. It was just gorgeously delivered from Neff tonight. No surprise that she's top 35 nationally on bars this year. Emily Lopez had the 995 bars routine. That's the highest individual score we've seen tonight. And here she goes on her vault. A nice Yurchenko full. Again, a hop backwards. Um, and she might get a deduction. It didn't look like she held that landing for that full second. Um, so the deduction goes, you have to hold the landing for a second for the half tenth. Get your heels together for the other half tenth. So it could be up to a whole tenth deduction, depending on what the judges see. Well, so far, the lineup of scores for the Broncos on vault, 9.725, 9.725, 9.5, 5, and 9.7. For Southern Utah on the bars, 9.75, 9.7, and 9.85. We're waiting to see what the judges officially award Bella Neff, but Naya Randolph leading the way on the bars once again. And coaches will, again, strategically make these lineups. You see already with the Thunderbirds, the score is steadily increasing as you go along. Um, as the gymnasts get more and more consistent in those routines and all five of them hit, it really sets up those last gymnasts to get high scores. This is Trista Goodman for Southern Utah. Huge Pike Jaeger from Trista. She's going into a really dynamic pack. Looks like she missed that pirouette, but she's trying again. 
gets it over on the second try. Do a blindfold, double back dismount. A little bit of a stumble on the landing, but a hit routine. Um, missing that pirouette isn't what uh, you're shooting for, but again, those mistakes happen, but it's just sticking with it, finishing out the routine is what counts at this point. Courtney Blackson was in the five slot on the first rotation. She is in the sixth and final position for Coach Bird here in rotation number two. One and a half stuck, held, feet close together. I wouldn't be surprised if that was a perfect score. That was picture perfect, one and a half on vault. If you can't tell, I am very excited about this. She does have a perfect 10 on vault to her name. These are the kinds of routines you watch as a gymnast and just get full body chills. It was that good. That was the cleanest landing that we have seen from any gymnast in either event so far tonight. Oh yeah, and to do it on that one and a half vault where I mentioned before you have that blind landing is so impressive. And she did it flawlessly. I saw her warm one up that was almost exactly like that. So you know that she hits that on a consistent basis. Oh, we will eagerly await that score. It looks like it's a 9.95 for Courtney Blackson. Still a heck of a score for the routine three event performer for the Broncos. And speaking of a three event performer, Aubrey Schwartz just doing the bars here tonight has had some difficulties this season and the coaching staff trying to take the pressure off a little bit and just having her work on bars where she has remained really good this year. She did a hop grip into a Jaeger nailing those handstands. And Aubrey just has really clean lines. You don't see her legs separate hardly at all, which is something the judges are looking for. And she did cast over, um, so she was shooting for that handstand, just overshot it a little bit. Something I would dare say most gymnasts have done. I personally did it once. Uh, and that's just shooting for perfection. Sometimes it can just go a little far. Here she goes again, still gets the handstand on the second try. And she has a unique dismount. A front giant into a one and a half, um, which is pretty unique. And she finished strong on that routine. Well, that wraps things up for the second rotation. And with Schwartz falling off the bars, that'll be a 48.875 for Southern Utah. They had a 49.25 last week, which is not far off their season best mark set on January the 15th. And it's a 48.875 as well for Boise State. So the Broncos season. maintain the Southern Utah will be on the beam in this third rotation. And it has been an adventure to say the least on the balance beam for the Flippin' Birds this year. I feel like you could say beam is an adventure just in <laughs> all cases, <laughs> truly. Um, when you ask uh, non-gymnasts or people who aren't really familiar with the gymnast community, they say, beam has got to be the hardest, right? And I mean, I wouldn't say no. It is a tricky event. Um, but the key things that you want to be looking for on beam is no wobbles, staying centered on that beam. And just like you would look for on floor, 180 splits, toes pointed, and control on all the things on the events. This is Alyssa Fernandez starting things off, the reigning MPSF freshman of the week. A really unique acrobatic series. She went side aerial into a back handspring step out. Into a front toss. She's a front side queen, apparently, hitting that aerial and front toss. A little shy on that split, not quite 180, but great control. And you can see these girls up on beam just so calm, so controlled. Now that is so impressive. An aerial into a one and a half dismount takes so much power. And to stick it, just beautiful. A great exclamation point to a really solid game resume. When Southern Utah has had their struggles with their overall team scores this year, oftentimes it's because they've counted one or two falls on the balance beam. So a strong start there from the freshman still getting plaudits from her teammates. This is Alyssa Voulage on the floor. Floor 
is generally people's most favorite to watch because you get to hear this fun music, see the gymnast personality come out. Um, and it's always fun to watch the sideline too because a lot of their teammates are dancing along. Round off one and a half to a front full, no question on that landing. Already lots of fun energy from this floor routine. Makes me excited to see the rest. Going into what looks like her final pass. Round up back handspring double back. No questions on that finish. Great routine. Two pass routine from Bulaj. The junior out of Yorba Linda, California, had just a 9-7 last week, and I'll venture a guess to say she'll be above that here tonight. I can agree. And a score just announced 9.825 for Alyssa Fernandez on the beam. And up next is Kennedy McLean, who had one heck of a beam routine last week up in Logan against Utah State. 9.95 tied for the second best score in Southern Utah history. And we get to see how she follows it up. And to be able to get that high of a score in an away meet shows a fearsome competitor in the making. So she does a front toss connected to a back handspring step out. And the key to that is getting the connection smoothly. If there's too much time in between the two skills, that will be a deduction or a deduction from the start value. A piked front toss, which is very difficult to do. To get all the way around in the pike position versus the tuck adds a level of difficulty. Toe turn which can get a lot of gymnasts. That's where a lot of deductions can come from, and she did a great job. In theory, it's the easiest part. It, you would think, yeah. <laughs> Beautiful dismount. You can see her full go above the beam, which is exactly what the judges are looking for, that height and then control on the landing. Absolute elation from her teammates. High tens all around for McLean, the younger sister of Carly McLean. And back over to the floor we go. This is Sydney Leach competing for the first time here tonight. Sophomore out of Irvine, California, who had her lowest score of the season last week on floor. As chance of 10 emanate from the crowd in the Southern Utah sideline. And Leach gets ready to keep things rolling along. I already like the sound of some Taylor Swift coming through <laughs> as she's going into her first pass. A really dynamic double pike. A little bit big of a lunge, but still in control. Every gymnast you see will do a leap pass. That's a requirement on the floor exercise. And in some cases, as you saw from Boulage, the level of difficulty you get from your leaps can contribute to just doing two passes in your floor routine. So we'll see what Leech here does if she has a two or three pass floor routine. A front lay, front full, excellent landing. So it looks like she'll be going for another third pass. Finishing with the double back. Just a little bit stuck on that landing. Um, just a little bit under rotation, but I got it under control in the end. 
really that looked to be her biggest deduction of the floor routine, so still a solid second routine from Leach. So up on the beam for Southern Utah is Ellie Cachola, who like McLean before her last week, notched a 9.950, and that contributed to a 49.375 on the beam for Southern Utah in an event where they have struggled this season. They notched the fourth best all-time record in school history and set an MPSF record in their first year in the conference. It just goes to show you that at any point in time, you can find everything and connect it all at once. Absolutely. And what you just saw from Cachola was a really long connection, um, but she does it beautifully, not missing any beats in between her connections. And here she's going into her acrobatic series. A handspring step out, layout step out. What I love about Cachola on beam is she's just so solid. You see her finish her landings and you just know that she's rock solid up there. Finishing off with the one and a half, just a small step forward, but beautiful routine otherwise. Well, Cachola just seems to continue to up the ante on the standard that she sets for herself. Someone who's competed for the last couple of years for Southern Utah and has really just become a plug and play reliable high score for Coach Bauman. Blake Pascal up on floor here for Boise State, following a 9 8 and a 9.75 from Boulage and Leach. Little look at the judges is always fun. Going into her first pass, double back. You could see she was on her toe on that back foot. She wasn't sure how close she was to the line. She was very close, but I think yeah. she stayed inside of it. She did, because it is a deduction to go outside of those lines. Great lead pass. She has really long lines. Round off one and a half layout. Something key to watch for in that pass is to have the layout be at the same level or higher than the one and a half. If it's lower, that will be a little bit of a deduction. Pushing out with a far handspring Rudy to a split jump. It looked like she just got a little bit of a weird punch angle into the split, but otherwise, a good routine. Well, Southern Utah's three scores on the beam as Naya Randolph gets set for her th for her third event of the night. 9.825 from Alyssa Fernandez, 9.875 from Kennedy McLean and Ellie Cachola. On the other side, a 9.8 and a 9.875 from Boulage and Leach. We'll see what Pascal gets from the judges as Randolph steps up, but Boise State came into this rotation with the lead. Southern Utah certainly throwing a counter punch. Yeah, that's just goes to show that every event, like there's no guarantee going into an event, no matter if you have the lead or not, you just have to keep hitting your routines. That was a back handspring step out, layout two feet, which well, is a added level of difficulty to the layout step out. Looked like she did have a little wobble there, but huge to stay on the beam. There'll still be a deduction, but nothing compared to what gets taken off if you fall off. Yes, for sure. A fall is a five times deduction, and depending on what scale you fall on, could be a deduction from their start value. The key thing as a beam competitor is to just move on to the next skill one at a time. Um, because it is one of the longer events, and you have a lot of time to get in your head. So just moving next to the next skill is the most important. And a nice pick from Randolph to finish your routine. That's a strong ending there for the freshman as Southern Utah looks to keep it rolling on the balance beam and back over to the floor. The sophomore from Mountain Lakes, New Jersey, Emma Loyam. A round off whip to double back. Normally you see a back handspring where their hands are on the floor, but she did a whip where her hands were off the floor, which adds difficulty.
Lots of great height on those leaves. She has one final pass. Double pike, and you can see a beautiful set up into that double pike before she's starting slipping, which is really good technique. Another two pass routine for Goisey and a really solid fourth routine from the Broncos. They're looking to raise their scores compared to what the standard has been for Coach Bird's team on the floor exercise this year. They average 49.2, but so far, Boulage leads the way with their first three scores at a 9.8. As we head back over to the beam in Southern Utah, sends Ali Code 2, the senior from Plano, Texas, who notched a career best 9.775 a week ago, second time she's had that score this season. And I want to say, talking to Coach Bauman, he said it's not very often you see a senior jump into a new lineup, and it just is a testament to Allie's work ethic getting into this lineup. She started off with an acrobatic series, back handsprings, step out, layout, step out. Just a little bit forward on her toes on that sheet jump. side aerial and she just has the dismount left a nice gainer fall to a stick and the Thunderbirds are pumped about that <laughs> as they should be uh, coach Bauman was as fired up as he has been all night when Co2 nailed the landing every score 9825 and above for Southern Utah We'll see what Co2 gets with Anna Hartley still to go. And back over to the floor, this is Elena McGovern, the junior out of Richmond, Kentucky. Two straight weeks, a 9.9 .9 on her floor routines. And we'll see what she's got tonight. Really impressive, Rudy, to back layout step out. Leaps are as Sato turns on beam, where those can be where you can get a lot of deductions. But as long as you're ending where you started, um, not under rotating your leaps, and have the 180 split, you can pretty much guarantee you won't get a deduction on those. Double back, nice controlled landing, chest up. Great routine. I can see how she's been scoring this consistent nine nines on that. Really good. Anna Hartley up as the final beam worker for Southern Utah tonight. In front of her, Ali Kotu has set a new career high with a 9.825. And the Thunderbirds sitting at a 49 0.225 right now on the beam. They average a 48.585 this season, but the last two weeks now, both at 49.225 plus, exactly what Coach Bauman wants to see, especially since he's the beam coach. Yep. <laughs> this is exactly the trajectory that he's looking for. Um, just finding their groove. Nice save. She just dropped her right shoulder just a little bit on that landing, but she stayed on. 
this is just a really comfortable spot to be in for Hartley, where everyone's hit before her. She just has to do her job, focus on one thing at a time, and she'll be great. Another side aerial there. She's finishing up, going into her dismount. The Thunderbirds have been on fire with their beam sticks tonight. So an excellent third rotation for the Flippin' Birds and Courtney Blackson, who has done nothing but score at least a 9925 so far tonight, steps up on floor as the reigning Mountain West Floor Specialist of the Week. She has twice received that honor this year, and last week, Maddie, tied a school record for the 9.95. And she's following a 9.85 from Loyam and a 9.875 from Elena McGovern. I have full confidence she's going to do what she's done on the last two events and just end Boise's rotations with a bang. Front handspring, front double pull, front punch, which is an E-level pass. A lot of difficulty. Looked like she had eyes on the back and side of her head as she stayed inside the corner over there just beyond the mat. Yeah, honestly, it's pretty intuitive. Spending all that time on the floor, you kind of know where you are in that corner. Really controlled lease there. A lot of this dancing before the last pass is really important for some rest going into this final pass. Round off, two and a half. So much difficulty in this routine. Nice little mic drop there at the end. She's learned it. A great routine. Three rotations down, one to go. We'll get Four. you the final. Courtney Blackson closed things off with a 9875. It was Elena McGovern, but on the beam, Kennedy McLean for Southern Utah. Another fantastic routine for the second straight week. Definitely. And I mean, following her 995 from last week to get a solid 9875 just shows consistency, which is what you want in any competitor, but especially on beam. Beautiful, full dismount, getting high above the beam, just spot on. And for the Broncos, it was Elena McGovern setting the stage for Blackson on the floor. Started out with a huge, or finished off, excuse me, with a double tuck. And that's a hard pass to finish off. They make it look really easy. You saw her chest up on the landing and the control on that step. Um, just leaves no question to the judges. So as we move into rotation number four, Boise State with the edge here on the road by .175. The margins are quite slim as we come down the stretch. The lineups for Boise State and fifth year full-time head, head coach Tina Bird. Boulage will start things off, followed by Sydney Coe. Emma Loyam will step up to the balance beam, followed by Emily Lopez, Adriana Pop, and Sydney Leach. The sophomore will round things out for Southern Utah on floor, which is what the fans always come to here to the AFEC to see. Alyssa Fernandez first, Taylor Gold second, Cachola and Christensen in the middle, and Randolph and Pardue will round things out for the Flippin' Birds here tonight. As Spencer was saying, the margin between the teams and the closeness of the team scores, it really just comes down to the little things. It comes down to a step on the landing, it comes down to a hit handstand, it comes down to a 180 leap. So it really is the small things that you're drilling in practice over and over because when it comes down to this, it could be, you know, winning or losing. Really interesting series there with the gainer back handspring to a layout step out. Not a skill you see very often. Another gainer to a layout step out. The 
just looking really comfortable and confident up there. This is Alyssa Voulaj up competing for the third consecutive rotation. Has had some solid scores tonight. And on her way right now to another one for the Broncos as they look for a road victory and a good score in the middle part of this season. She just has her dismount to round out this routine. One and a half, little hop forward. Again, you see there, she held her heels together at the end, which is a new requirement all across the NCAA. So you'll see that often on vault, bars, and beak. Alyssa Fernandez up first on the floor for Southern Utah. All the other SCU gymnasts there on the side, dancing along. Turn up back handspring, double back. Nice landing there. crowd there is always fun. Fully into her final pass. A front punch Rudy, one and a half twist. Very well done for Fernandez on that daily team. Well, early in her young career, the best score she's notched on a floor routine so far, a 9.8. She's done it three times this year. Had done it three straight weeks before 9775 last week. She might have a new career best score right there. I would believe it. Just the makings, again, of another solid, consistent competitor. And to see that from a freshman is exciting. <laughs> One of 12 freshmen. Coach Bauman and the staff very excited about this signing class as we're back over to the beam. The sophomore, Sydney Coe, is up for Boise State. Very nice series. Back handspring step out to a layout. Just no questions asked. It is more difficult to land with two feet on the beam at once than it is the step out one at a time. So that adds difficulty there. She did have a pretty good wobble on the toe turn. As I said, that's sometimes where it can get you is on that toe turn. She is going into her dismount. Round off one and a half. Little hop on the landing and just that tiny bobble on the toe turn, but otherwise you can tell that when this girl hits, she hits. Very solid. Reminds me a lot of her older sister, Caitlin Co., who they called cash money with the power <laughs> that she demonstrates as a gymnast. A very powerful gymnast, for sure. Even nine eights on the board in the First go around for each team. Fernandez a 9 8 on floor. Voulage a 9 8 on beam for Boise State. And up steps Kayla Pardue. Speaking of powerful gymnasts, yes. <laughs> Kayla Pardue exemplifies that. For sure. And she has a unique pass. She goes round off double tuck. And I believe we saw one of those from Boise, but normally you see a round off back handspring into the double back. And she just took out the back handspring, which takes so much power. Front layout, front pull. Nice control there. Just 
just watching from her performance so far, this just looks easy for her. Round off double pike. Just over rotated it a little bit, falling backwards. So that'll be a five tenths deduction. Yeah, she was looking very strong until that ending. And so the pressure certainly on the final four floor performers for Southern Utah, Kachola, Goal, Christensen, and Randolph. And they actually flipped that order around. Kayla Pardue was originally slated to go sixth. Instead, she goes second there. So we'll see how that moves things around. Goal is in the four slot. Cachola is still up next. So a few last minute lineup changes for Scotty Bauman and the Flippin' Birds. As Emma Loyam, who had a great floor routine, is up here on the beam. Notch the 9925 rather on beam against Southern Utah last year. She did a triple series there, a back handspring step out, layout step out, layout step out. And I don't think I have to tell you how difficult that is. Uh, she did it beautifully. And that, of course, adds a lot of difficulty to her routine and to her start value. Good side arrow. You can see she started to lift that toe up a little bit, just caught on the edge of the beam, um, but she did manage to save it and stay on. Interesting combination into a dismount. You don't normally see someone do their leaps right into their dismount. She had a little bit of a stumble on that landing, but she did stay on, which is clearly what we want from the beamer team. And why don't you typically see the leaps into the dismount on the beam? Usually they just have different combinations of leaps that are standalone by themselves. Like if they do a split jump to a split three quarter. Um, and normally those gainer dismounts are just done by themselves. So it's just, it's just unique. I just haven't seen very much of it. Up steps Ellie Cachola having another excellent night for Southern Utah. In the first rotation on her vault, she had a 9.875 and also had a beam routine of 9.875. Off she goes on floor. Huge double tuck. <laughs> Straight into her second pass. Front layout. Cachola is a great person to have uh, at this point in the lineup, especially following a fall, just with all of her experience on this event. Fast. Punch one and a half. Team from the Pachola, just exactly what you want to see following the fall. Just what the doctor ordered for Southern Utah. She had some former flipping birds cheering her on down there on the sideline. The MRGC championship team set to be set to receive their rings after the meet tonight but some truly great former athletes. Rachel Smith down there. Caitlin Coe is in the house as well. Carly McLean watching on. There's a whole lineup of former Flippin' Birds out to support. They're not technically teammates, but it certainly feels that way with the way that the community remains involved and the way that everyone stays connected in this program. One family, one fight, and that family really is forever. Here's Emily Lopez. 9.875 last week. Her season high this year, 9.925. And she does not 
compete in the all around, but is a three event performer for Boise State and just a really, really good one. Yes, you can see just like through the edges of her fingertips, she is just presenting everything. Just the showings of a solid, confident beam performer. So there's an example of like what we were discussing before of a standalone leap combination. Um, where it's not connected to anything, but will still satisfy the leap requirements for the beam routine. Very nice front toss. Very good connection, too. Another Daner Cole dismount. Really good chest up. Um, that's what a lot of judges will be looking for on these beam dismounts is chest up, feet together, stuck landing. And she did it great. Taylor Goal was originally scheduled to go second. Instead, she goes fourth. Coach Bauman and the assistants, Jamie Weissong, Jeff Richards, trying to find that right combination of lineups. And of their 24 routines this year, 16 of them new across the four events. Taylor starts with a rounded back handspring double pike. Nice controlled landing. I mentioned that Taylor is in a different position than she was originally slated. Uh, that's something coaches will prepare their gymnasts for, just to be ready at a moment's notice to be put in a different spot in the lineup. And she is handling it like a champ. for a final tumbling pass. Back hand, double back. Team from goal. She's very excited, as she should be. And her teammates flooding her with plenty more excitement as well. Students want a 10. It's a high bar. I, <laughs> I think maybe we ought to let them be the judges one of these times. <laughs> <laughs> just one of these times. Just bring competing student sections. You get to judge one event. Yeah. One competitor on one event, whichever one you choose. I wonder what score they'd give somebody. I like this idea. It would be really fun to commentate. I think it would I think it would really be engaging for the fans in attendance. And a really good learning experience. Exactly. <laughs> And see just how hard it is to be one of those judges down there. Yep. Of course, they would make it look easy because they're just right down 10 and say, all right, we're good to go. <laughs> well, we won't know until we try. <laughs> Another senior, Adriana Pop. Just four seniors on this roster for head coach Tina Bird. A lot of youth for the Broncos going forward. Such a strong program that she's been a part of for the better part of three decades. And Pop has had a 9.825 or above in each of her last three beam routines. She follows on the heels of a strong one from Emily Lopez, whose score we're still waiting on. Boise State on the beam so far, 9-8, 9, eight, nine, six, two, five, nine seven, two, five. So they will be looking to drop that 9-6-2-5. Ooh, gorgeous, gorgeous series. Really difficult. Back handspring, step out. Two-foot back handspring, layout. Two-foot layout. It's amazing when gymnasts can literally tumble on this four inch piece of wood. You won't see me trying. <laughs> Finish up with a good gainer full dismount. The difficulty in that routine was very impressive. And a solid couple of landings there for the Broncos. Lopez score just came in. So did Taylor Golds for Southern Utah, a pair of 9.875s. So Boise State with the advantage with two gymnasts left on floor. This is Brindley Christensen. Back 
canceling double tuck. Very well done. one and a half front layout beautifully executed just floated that layout this very intense routine I love it nice job on those leaps getting them all the way around You see that interaction with the crowd, that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Going into our last pass. Punch front Rudy. Just what the Thunderbirds needed. So just two gymnasts still to go here tonight and the final score is still very much in doubt. Sydney Leach, the sophomore from Irvine, California, had a career best 9.825 last week on the balance beam, getting set to step up for Boise State, who are looking to drop that 9.625. Christensen should have a solid score, and that'll leave it up to Naya Randolph to drop the 9.125 for the Flippin' Birds on floor. But Leach is up first, the final Boise State gymnast to go here tonight, following a 9.775 from Adriana Pop. She is in a comfortable position where all the gymnasts before her have hit. But that being said, they still do want to drop that 9.625. A back handspring step out to a layout step out. Looked to be just a little bit piked, but a common series for the Broncos. Nice loop combination. I feel like that's where you can see the most diversity on beam is uh, in those loop passes because you can start in any direction forward or sideways on the beam and turn as much as you want. Front toss to a beat jump. Smooth connection there. Oh, another leap into a dismount. A switch jump, a switch leap into a gainer pike. Pretty cool. So Boise State's gymnasts all done tonight. You see Brinley Christensen with a 9.825 for the Flippin' Birds, and it's all up to Nia Randolph, the do-it-all freshman, once again, as she has in every meet so far this year, competing in the all-around, and off she goes. With a double lay, no easy feat, an E-level skill, Probably one of the most difficult tumbling passes to execute. And as a freshman too, just so much power and skill. Nice leaps, got her full rotation. She's just having fun out there. It's always so fun to watch. Goes into her last pass. Front tuck step out, round up back handspring, double back. And she stays on her feet. A back drop for the Flippin' Birds to end out their floor rotation. As she nailed it and she knew it. We'll await the score from Naya Randolph and we'll see what Boise State gets out of this. The little things. Well, let's go get our scores from the PA announcer as Southern Utah. Looks to have the win, but it'll be officially momentarily. 7.875 from SUU, Ellie Cachola. And first place on the vault from Boise State with a 9.95, Courtney Blackson. In a tie for third place with 9.85 from SUU, Bella Neff. And Naya Randolph.
in second place on the bars with a 9.925 from Boise State, Courtney Blackson. And your champion tonight on the uneven bars with a 9.95 from Boise State, Emily Lopez. On the balance beam, there's a three-way tie for first place. All with 9.875s from Boise State, Emily Lopez. From SUU, Ellie Cachola. And Kennedy McLean. And on the floor exercise, a three-way tie for second place with 9.875 from Boise State, Courtney Blackson. Also from Boise State, Elena McGovern. And from SUU, Taylor Goal. And your floor exercise champion tonight with a 9.9 .9 from SUU, Naya Randolph. In first place in the overall, in the all around with a 39.325 from SUU, Naya Randolph. That matches a career high in the all around for young Naya Randolph, 39.325. And their team results with a 196.125 in second place, Boise State. And tonight's winners with a 196.275, your SUU Thunderbirds. Now the moment the fans have been waiting for, it's official Southern Utah prevails. 196.275 to 196.125. A late fourth rotation surge in which, in which the Thunderbirds go for a 49.225 on the floor, a season high on the floor exercise. Boise State with a 48.9 on the balance beam, and Southern Utah just pulls away at the end. Stick around for the post-meet wrap-up, though. Scotty Bauman, head coach for Southern Utah, will join us as his Thunderbirds get the win and put up a quality.